Morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Hey, I thought I'd showcase a couple of recent builds here. These are DPMS low pattern LR308s. Um, the one in the back there, I started uh, late October, early November last year. Got it finished up in January and test fired, got all the bugs worked out. Um, this one here I just completed about maybe a week ago. Um, both of them are built on uh, New Frontier Armory upper and lower receivers. Um, I used a Generation 2 upper on this newer build and a Generation 1 upper on the first build. Um, there's quite a few similarities between these rifles. They're pretty much identical, but there's also quite a bit that's different, and we'll, we'll get into that. Okay, so both rifles for now, I just went with standard A2 bird cages. Um, I ended up going with JP Enterprises uh, jam nuts. And the reason I like JP Enterprises on the ID of the jam nut, they have a pretty generous radius. So if you have a barrel that doesn't have a relief cut between the shoulder and the threads, or you have a barrel where the threads, they have tried to run the threads all the way up against the shoulder, they just about never get them completely there. That relief cut on these, uh, these JP Enterprise uh, jam nuts will allow you to start off with your jam nut uh, right up against the shoulder, at least on these barrels anyway. And that one there, I went with stainless, no particular reason. This one here is phosphated or black oxide. Uh, just cosmetically, I think I like the black better than the stainless. Went with Wilson Combat, their Tactical Hunter Series, 18 inch, rifle length, gas systems, oddball twist rate, 11.25 to one, fully fluted. And the Tactical Hunter series uses a 0 0.750 gas journal dimension. Okay, so on the first build, I went with rifle speed and I did the same thing for the second build and these are not cheap, but I really like these things. To me, they're, they're worth the extra money. Um, the plunger size for the Wilson Combat 18-inch rifle length gas system for the rifle speed came in at 0.897. Um, rifle speed gives you uh, uh, quite a few different plunger sizes, but that's what worked out the best for these rifles. It allows me to run at eight gas setting. The higher the number, the more gas. And that ran my low-powered NATO stuff perfect and then on my uh, higher powered Winchester 308 stuff I was able to uh, turn the gas down calm the rifle down a little bit and then I still have plenty of adjustability if I wanted to run a can I could run even lower gas settings or if I'm at eight and for whatever reason I need more gas I still have quite a few settings to increase the gas so 0.897 is what worked out like perfect on uh, my rifle speed Wilson combat barrel combination. I should also mention, mention in addition to the uh, plunger size for the rifle speed, uh, both the Wilson combat bolt carrier group and this Odin works come into 18.6 ounces. And both rifles are using the arrow precision um, 3.8 ounce buffer. So 3.8 ounce buffer, 18.6 ounce bolt carrier group, and the 0.897 inch plunger is um, how we got the gas system dialed in right in the middle with plenty of adjustment one way or the other. One last thing on the gas system, um, rifle speed uses a straight gas tube. And on these builds with the rifle length gas system, the gas tube length is 15.4, which is Armalite spec. And I could not find anything off the shelf in a straight gas tube at the correct Armalite spec. So I went to White Oak and had them custom made. Um, this rifle here, I actually installed a 15.5 and still had plenty of clearance between the gas key and the bolt carrier group. And the second one I had made at the exact Armalite spec, 15.4. So 15.5 makes you a little nervous. Just go with the, uh, the correct 15.4.
This is a Midwest Industries 15 inch. This is their low pattern to match my low pattern upper receiver. And you can see there, it's dialed in on both of them. Magpul versus Midwest Industries. In case you're not familiar with bipod mounts, the Magpul's on the top, Midwest Industries is on the bottom. First thing you might notice is the hole spacing for the T-nuts. Magpul will not allow you to mount in one slot. You have to use two slots. Midwest Industries will allow you to use one slot but there's enough space in between to where if you wanted to bridge two slots, you can. So this may be important to you depending on where you're trying to mount your bipod. Magpul screws are also about two threads longer. So if you try to mount your Magpul underneath that low profile gas block, you may have to trim the screws on the Magpul where the Midwest Industries gives you the correct length on the screws. So if I wanted to, and I wanted to move the uh, Midwest Industries out underneath my gas block, it's gonna be close, but I still have clearance. Um, I won't be able to do that on the Magpul unless I really trim the screws. Magpul is one piece machine, all aluminum. Midwest, this is steel. It screws in and there's also a, a, a steel insert that locks it into place on the back. You do get a little bit more surface area for mounting your bipod than the Midwest, but overall, I, pr I prefer the Midwest. The Wilson Combat Bolt Carrier Group is identical to the Odin Works. I took a caliper and made the critical measurements, machining marks. I literally took a magnifying glass and I looked these things over and I could not tell any difference at all. I'm convinced that they are made by the same company. Other than the logos, that's the only thing that's different. And I paid $230 for the Wilson Combat. And with a military discount from Sportsman's Warehouse, I got to Odin Works for about 185. So that was the only difference, price. Okay, so the lowers are identical. Um, all the same exact parts used except for the bolt catch. Um, this one here came with my new Frontier Armory kit. And you can see that down here is smooth. But otherwise, uh, it looks pretty close to this uh, Aero Precision. The Aero Precision has this little protrusion down here at the bottom. So maybe you get a little bit better engagement. I don't know. They both fit about the same uh, pin-wise as far as uh, any kind of slop or movement. They fit pretty good in the receivers that way. Now, what I'm getting ready to show you is a, a common problem with these uh, AR-10s or LR-308s, and that's proper engagement for your holdback on the last round. And we'll open up the rifle and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this area here can, can be a problem on a lot of builds or even uh, from a lot of manufacturers. Uh, to where this bolt catch tab here that mates up with the follower for your last round doesn't engage very well with the, the mag follower. Uh, it could be a magazine problem. It could be that you just put the wrong uh, catch in here and it just doesn't quite line up with, with the magazine. And as I slide the magazine up, you'll see where it makes contact with the back of the follower. And this is what catches your bolt on the last round. Like I said, this is a problem area. If you don't get the right bolt catch in here, the right magazine, uh, you're not going to hold open on the last round. Um, this particular one I got with the um, New Frontier Armory kit. It fits pretty well. Out of Between the two, it probably fits the best. It has the most uh, engagement, and I don't see any problems with anybody's magazine as far as how this one engages. The other rifle I used, uh, Aero Precision. We'll take a look at that one real quick. Okay, so on this Aero Precision... Uh, you can see where we're kind of cutting it close. I mean, it's on there pretty good, and I've checked all the magazines that I have, and it's it's going to work fine. But you can see where we're 
maybe not quite as engaged with the aero precision as, as I would like. The uh, New Frontier Armory on the other build fits a little bit better. I tried uh, another New Frontier Armory on this build and it wasn't much better. So it partly could be just the way the receiver hole was drilled for the bolt catch. Slightly different on this receiver. It'll work. Okay, so this area here wasn't really a problem, but I could see where maybe it was going to be as things got kind of wore in. And um, I used an offset retainer pin. You can see here that the, um, as soon as I get my pointer in there, you can see here that the, uh, the buffer retainer pin is right on the outside edge. And this is made by uh, Galloway Precision. And that's just to make sure that I had enough engagement from the back of the bolt carrier group to push this buffer off of that retainer pin. And um, like I said, I was kind of cutting it close on both of them. I don't think it was going to be an issue, but I put offsets in both of these just to make sure that it wasn't going to be. Okay, so this is quite a bit different between the two rifles is the upper receiver. This is their second generation. And you can see the machining and all the, the lightning cuts. And this is their first generation. And that thing's a chunk. And I didn't weigh them, but there is a big difference in weight. Big difference. If you go to their website, they show the same weight. They're not the same weight. One of them is significantly heavier than the other, being the first generation. And you can see here where the front of the upper meets up with the Midwest handguard. And then you can see that Quite a bit of material got moved, removed here. Now I'm not sure what's going on up here. You can see where there's like one less slot and they put this cut out. Maybe some of you guys know what that's for. Maybe there's some type of uh, scope mount or optic or something that, that slides into that slot. I'm, I'm not sure what that's about. Like I said, maybe you guys know. On the uh, original receiver, it's just a slot cut out about as far as they can go. So like I said, I'm not quite sure what that's about now on this second gen receiver you can see the rails they cut the center out to shave weight and these are full length they're not cut out and then um, something else I noticed <laughs> um, on this one here the second gen they didn't quite machine this area they they left out a slot and I was looking at this and it looked like this was the same distance. If you look at the charging handle, where my mag pole comes in, it has the same amount of space as this one. But you'll see on the original, there's an extra slot here, even though this rear sight is in the same exact spot on the rail. And you can notice that this area here is longer in this area here. So there's another difference between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. So anyway, just to show that, you know, the rear sight is in the same place in relation to the charging handle. We're at about an inch and a half there. And if we come over here, we're at about an inch and a half also. So you can see that the rear sight is in the same relationship on both receivers. They're just machine different. Okay, so when we were talking about the receivers, I forgot to mention, or the lower receiver, that uh, New Frontier Army gives you a tensioning lug. And I'm also running uh, Wilson Combat three and a half, four pound triggers. Well, we'll do one last flyover. Generation one. Generation two.
All right, Pete, North Las Vegas. I think we hit all the highlights over and out. Okay, bonus clip. Once again, I failed to mention something that's important. Um, I purchased both these Wilson combat barrels about five, six months apart. So I don't think they were uh, machined or manufactured at, on the same run, uh, but they had the same problem. The uh, gas port was full of leftover chips from when they drilled the, the gas port hole in the barrel. And there was also a little bit of flashing or tailings left over still attached to the gas port on the inside of the barrel that I had to work loose and uh, break off and remove with a cleaning rod. And I was really careful. I didn't, didn't damage any rifling or, or grooves. But uh, that's something that, that I think you need to know. If you get a, a Wilson combat barrel, check the gas port which means you're probably going to have to have a boroscope if you want to do it justice.